Welcome everyone, Quistine here on Serious Gaming with a look at classic World of Warcraft. The stress test that is still ongoing despite the fact that it should have ended after one day. Well, it's only been longer than one day. There are a couple of things that I want to talk about. And one, the first ones is custom uh, tolerance, which may f make things feel a bit clunkier than they should or laggy when there is no real lag and that's because of I think the spell batching system, I'm not entirely certain. What I do know for certain though is that there is something you can do to make things feel smoother. So there is a Reddit post that I've linked in the description of this video, but basically put has you put in a script that looks at what your custom or your spell queue window is. By default, it was set for to 400 to me, and what the Reddit post recommends is setting it lower to either to 50 or 60 or 100 or something like that. So I have a macro here, slash console spell queue window 60. I'm switching that to 120, and that just means things will be smoother. Secondly, the options menu is quite different than what you might expect. Um, and there's also two things that are missing that should be here. One. There is no full screen mode, there's just windowed or windowed full screen, which can be quite annoying. On top of that, there is no option, at least on the outset, to disable the depth, depth effect. Now, that doesn't necessarily matter for the most part, it's just something you deal with, right? How the game looks. If you want to disable it though, there is a script, another script linked in the description. I'm not entirely certain if it works. I hope it does because disabling the death effect is not just useful for the sake of oh, you don't get the bloomy screen when you die. It's also something useful on a particular boss in Zulgarub, so it can be very, very good. Uh, beyond that, let's actually get into the meat and potatoes. How does it feel? Well, fucking great. On many levels, how it runs is smooth for the most part. It's fairly smooth. There were some uh, performance issues when there was just so so much of a rush of people. And I don't think Blizzard is doing us a favor by only having two English PvP servers on launch for the entirety of Europe. I mean, seriously, Blizzard, do you think you're gonna fit all the guilds that are gonna go ham in two P in two PvP realms in English? Well, but you have a German one and a French one and a Russian one. Yeah. Guess what? The majority of Europe is not Russian or French or German. <laughs> the majority of European players, even from those countries, a significant uh, and not so uh, insignificant portion of the player base is gonna want to play on an English realm because that's where the really good guilds are for the most part. That's where they play, and Blizzard is like, oh, we're only gonna give you two. This is like. A significant mistake. I'm pretty sure it's gonna bite them in the ass in quite a few ways, um, and certainly not something I would uh, certainly something I would like to see reverse. But I imagine there's gonna be enough of a backlash by the time it gets released that Blizzard will hopefully change their minds and add an extra realm. But I guess we'll see about that. It's great to f to be in a world that's very populated, though. What is surprising to me is that. Apparently, vanilla had some sort of dynamic respawn rates for a very long time. Different than what you'd think on a private server. So private servers have dynamic respawn rates. This is this is different in quite a few ways. Mob behavior is different. The world is different. Like, and it and it always felt wrong to me as someone who did play vanilla. It always did feel wrong to me to some extent in the way private servers did it. I mean, this is one of the reasons I never paid much attention to private servers, and even when I played them, something felt off. Um, and the reason is, they don't have the exact values. Well, maybe some of them are pretty close, but even then, uh, even then, many of them get it wrong in some way, or the scripting is not up to the task that it needs to be. So, actually playing uh, serve on a server by Blizzard is a very different and po far more positive experience. There's a lot of people and yet, although there are some crowds in certain areas that you'd expect some mobs, some quests, all that, uh, it never felt completely out of hand. It also didn't get completely ridiculous, at least very early on, compared to what you get on private servers. 
So the initial area is perfectly fine. It does get somewhat out of hand because of the layering um, and because of the respawn rates, it somewhat starts getting out of hand once you leave the first area. So I was playing an orc, uh, first character I created, I was playing an orc in the Valley of Trials. That felt fine. After I left that though, um, it was a diff it, it was one different than what I expected, obviously because of the fact that I've played on private servers and I got used to them. But on top of that, there was also um, it also felt off because of the layering and because of the respawn rates. I mean, things were respawning incredibly quickly, and yet there weren't necessarily hundreds of people in every location uh, to deal with. So maybe something Blizzard should work on, maybe something Blizzard should consider dealing with. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, though, it was a great experience. It felt smoother, uh, faster even, though it really didn't end up being faster, but it certainly felt far smoother than what I've been dealing with on private servers. Now, part of this is the performance is significantly better. Obviously, using a modern client instead of some old <laughs> client that's existed like 10 years ago certainly makes things feel a lot better. That's the first thing to mention. But uh, th there's just more than that. The quality of scripting, the way mobs behave, mob mobs using abilities that you would almost never see on private servers, and the frequency of them using those abilities makes for a far greater experience. Which is not surprising considering what we expected, right? I mean, the reason we've wanted classic for so long is because private servers are simply garbage in comparison to what Blizzard can do. And they are. Like, I think this proves it beyond the shadow of a doubt uh, to me that they absolutely are uh, completely, complete and utter garbage compared to what Blizzard can and has achieved already. So that's, um, that's great to see. And it's nice. I mean, the layering... Um, I expect it to be worse than it actually was. I still feel there is some work to be done. I feel Blizzard is gonna screw us all up with the server decisions. I really, really do. Because the problem with that particular decision is just... You're gonna have all the top guilds congregating on these two servers. And many of them are gonna be European, so... <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Certainly, um... Uh, not the experience that we'd want. And I think things will get out of hand... Um, because of it. On the other hand, I guess it's gonna be interesting to see how things develop when you have a lot of guilds being put on the same server. Beyond that, well, quest work, scripting works, uh, smoothness was certainly there. I think we could do without... There are some things that look weird. Some of the foliage that we have, and this is playing on max settings, some of the foliage that we have just doesn't quite well fit in a number of areas. I mean, for the most part, it's fine. Other times it feels weird, other times it's just absolutely hideous. Um, so it's a bit touch and go with respect to that. I'm, I imagine there are going to be some try-hard vanilla players like, oh, I, I don't like that, and just lower the settings. Um, some people will say, well, I just like how the water does. <laughs> I don't. I very much like the, the DirectX 11 water. Thank you very much. Keep that shit in. I would say what they could do, and I'm losing mobs here all the time. With the sadness of being a mage. Um, one of the things they can do, and should do as far as I'm concerned, is just give us higher resolution textures on most things. I'm not talking different models. I'm not talking you know, different polygon count or anything like that. I am literally just saying give us higher resolution than what we have. It would make it a, certainly a more a, a, a better experience for a lot of people without sacrificing really anything in terms of the feel of of a classic that's what i'd say that's the only thing i'd want outside of that it's pretty good pretty solid and maybe you know just deal with the custom lag tolerance by default so people don't have to use um a damned um <laughs> a damned um, um macro to be able to uh, get through that it would certainly be nice, wouldn't it, to have that uh, option right from from the very start, and maybe the death effect as well. But that's what you and there are certainly some things that you that aren't 
like very minor things. I think they caught most of the stuff during the actual beta. Uh, but there are still things that they miss. Like, say, there's a chest in the open world and the person who... The person who gets the chest first is the only person who loot it. I really don't remember if that was the case on an, an actual uh, classic. I really don't uh, recall uh, if that was uh, the situation. I don't think so, but that's just my impression. Could very well be that might have been the case. Though that is something that does feel uh, that's been taken out of Modern WoW and because they've basically recreated uh, modern WoW within, uh, or they recreate the classic within the modern WoW client. There are things that they missed, quite a few things. They worked for a list. There are still things that they need to do, but for most part, small things. I am curious to see how week one will look like with regards to, to classic. It certainly feels that it's deceptive in this respect. It feels easier, but it's not really easier t in terms of leveling. It really isn't. Like, in terms of the time you spend, it's really about the same that you'd expect on, you know, say, a private server and all that. So the time is about similar in some ways, though there, though it is different. It, it does feel different. It is different in, in some, some ways, some more significant than others. But I'm curious to see how it will pan out in terms of rating and all that. Because, yes, people will be raiding week one. There are people that are trying hard. Hell, maybe I will do it myself, depending on how fast I level. I mean, I have a dungeon group set up, a cleave dungeon group, not as a mage, but as a warrior, that's what I'm gonna play as. I have all of that set up, and hopefully I will be able to get to Molten Core on week one. We'll see. But there are entire guilds that have prepared for this. There are entire guilds that are ready for that, they have made plans, done extensive testing, prepared for it, uh, spent a lot of time and effort and energy into getting ready for it. So we'll have to wait and see if they succeed in that and how raids will be. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone's, you know, m maybe a couple of guilds have gotten exclusive access to raids. I mean, that's the suspicion uh, from the part of the community, but. To the degree that that is true, I don't really know. Uh, I really don't know, and Trust to an extent, really, I don't care much to speculate on this. Like, maybe Blizzard did give exclusive access to some guilds, maybe they didn't. Okay, that priest is gonna get that wolf. Yeah, can be, can be a bit uh, annoying fighting for some mobs. Some areas are better than others. The, in terms of like their design and their questing experience, some, some areas clearly are uh, going to be better than others. Some areas are going to be slow. Some, but the the thing is that the areas that are better than others, like say the human zone, is pretty well designed, right? But the human zone is going to be chock full of the largest number with the largest number of players because every warrior that's going to play alliance that knows what the hell he's doing or she's doing is going to want uh, want to play human. I apologize for that, um, and. And that, and that certainly will affect the quality of leveling in that zone, but it's certainly a f smoother leveling experience than, you know, this, for instance. But also, of course, per personal preference comes into play here. And it varies by zone by zone, by zone right? Depends uh, on a zone by zone level, what's better, what's worse. Because you might have a situation where the 1 to 6 area is is better than other places, but you have the 6 to 10 uh, stuff being worse. It kind of balances itself at an end, especially when you consider the 10 to 20 uh, zones like Westfall, Lock, Modan, and all that. Anyway, uh, that's really all I want to say. Sort of short, but just, you know, giving some thoughts. Um, it's pretty okay. It really is okay. I would strongly recommend that people check it out. Uh, I mean, you only need an active subscription. You can just subscribe for a month, check it out, play it out, see how it is for yourself, and you may enjoy it or you may hate it. I will say that if you want to play Classic, one thing that is required is a certain degree of patience. And also a sort of mentality that you might not have on retail, because Classic is not... You know, as much as I'm going to power level and rush to 60 and all that, Classic shouldn't be about that. Now, it is going to be that for me, but I'm in a hardcore guild. <laughs> And I signed up for being in a hardcore guild. And it's also going to be my job, right? I'm going to stream that. Um, but it doesn't have to be for you. 
it doesn't have to be your experience. You can and should enjoy the level experience. You should enjoy the world. That's what classic is all about. That's what the experience is all about. That's what it has to offer is that it's this journey, this adventure, I guess hero's journey or this adventure that your character is on and you're on this journey on your own or with other people or you meet people along the way that you befriend. That's part of it. And you go on this epic, uh, epic, story, epic, uh, uh, I guess you could say story, but it's not really a story. It's more of a path that you follow. And it leads to a conclusion of you getting to 60, in which case another path opens up, another journey really begins there. But don't feel, uh, don't feel the need when it comes to leveling to think that you need to be zerging for it. That the only thing that matters in vanilla is getting to 60 and raiding, because that's really not the case. That, that really isn't the case. I mean, this is one of the things that ruins modern WoW for me, that so much of what we do outside of the max level is just so pointless and boring. Um, I mean, the story isn't particularly interesting, the quests aren't particularly interesting, and the experience isn't really interesting. We play MMOs to play with other people. We don't play MMOs to have a subpar level uh, RPG leveling experience, which is what WoW is, right? It's about... Playing with it, playing a massively multiplayer online game with a truckload of people. It's standing in the va Valley of Trials or in Northshire and seeing hundreds of people on your screen at once. And I can say that feels great. That feels fucking amazing. Just that alone with everyone at level one feels fucking amazing. Because you know there's one person behind every keyboard there. Kwasin here, signing off, thank you all for watching, stay tuned for more, and if you like my content, please do consider supporting me via PayPal, Patreon, links are in the description or on the screen right now.